Mr Corsi here. Let's look at a familiar situation. Cartesian plane, x, y axis, both at right angles to each other, and plot a point P. Where is that point? Well, we start at the origin. Let's travel A parallel to the x axis. Let's travel B parallel to the y axis. That gives us our familiar A and B x and y coordinates. So what difference does it make if we assume this is the complex plane? Well, in that case, the point P will represent the complex number A plus IB. And you'll notice that the x-coordinate A now measures the real part of Z, and the y-coordinate B now measures the imaginary part of B. So our x and y-axis measure the real part and the imaginary part of Z. That now becomes there for the real axis and the imaginary axis. So that's the equivalence between Cartesian plane, complex plane, where each number in the Cartesian plane represents a complex number. Let's go back to the Cartesian plane and let's look in particular at a point that lies at a distance 1 from the origin. It lies on the unit circle. So there it is, distance 1, and its coordinates A along parallel to the x-axis and B parallel to the y-axis. Now there's another way of locating this point, not just the x and y-axis. Let's consider all points that are at a unit distance from the origin. There they are. Now P is included in that. There's all the points a distance 1 from the origin. So when, to locate P, what we can do is take a radius from the origin to the point 1, 0, rotate it until it hits the point B, P, and then measure that angle, theta, in this case. And we can ask ourselves, what's the relationship between the x and y coordinates A and B and that angle of rotation, theta? In this green triangle, cos theta is A over 1, sine theta is b over 1. So the a, x coordinate a, is now cos theta. y coordinate b is now sine theta. And that's true of every point on this unit circle. The coordinates can be written as cos theta, sine theta, where theta is the amount of rotation that a radius is taken from the x-axis anticlockwise to get to the point. Right, let's go back to the complex plane. Now remember that each point AB represented a complex number A plus IB. So in this case, cos theta sine theta will represent the complex number cos theta plus I sine theta. True again for all points on the unit circle in the complex plane. Well, let's summarise some of the information we've got so far. Complex numbers, when we write them in the form a plus ib, that's called the Cartesian form of the complex number. And we've now not found out that complex numbers that sit on the unit circle in the complex plane, that's those with uh, modulus 1, can be written in the form cos theta plus i sine theta. That representation is called polar form. We've written z in polar form. And the angle of rotation theta is said to be an argument of that complex number z. So now it's time for you to try a couple of questions. Here they are. So pause the video and have a, an attempt at these two questions. So here's the answer to the first one. Find an argument for the complex number negative i. Well, there's negative i. And it certainly is on the unit circle. So what about an argument for negative i? Well, let's start the rotation. There's a pi up in 2, 
two lots of pi upon two, three lots of pi upon two. So an argument for negative i is three pi upon two, and therefore a representation of negative i in polar form is cos three pi upon two plus i sine three pi upon two. Now that's not the only argument that we can find for that complex number. Let's continue the rotation by another complete turn, another four lots of pi upon two added on to the three lots of pi upon two we had. So we'll get seven lots of pi upon two as another argument of that complex number negative i. So another representation of negative i in polar form would be cos 7 pi upon 2 plus i sine 7 pi upon 2. Another way to tackle finding an argument for negative i would be to rotate that line anti well clockwise. Sorry, we've been doing anti-clockwise. This would be a negative rotation in this case of pi upon 2. There's another argument of the complex number negative i. So a polar form representation for negative i in this case would be cos negative pi upon 2 plus i sine negative pi upon 2. Let's look at question 3 now and its solutions. And question 4. So if you freeze the video and have a tackle at these questions. So here's question 3 answer. Representation of negative 1. Let's find where negative 1 is. There it is. And again it's on the unit circle. Let's look for an argument of negative 1. Here's a positive rotation of pi radians. That's the argument pi. So polar form of negative 1 would be cos pi plus i sine pi. Again, we could continue this rotation by another complete turn, another 2 pi added on to the original rotation of pi to give us 3 pi as an alternative argument. So another polar form for negative 1 would be cos 3 pi plus i sine 3 pi. Or again, we could do a clockwise rotation or a negative rotation in this case of negative pi. The argument negative pi would give a polar form for negative 1 of cos negative pi plus i sine negative pi. So moving on to complex number i. There's a rotation of pi upon 2 argument pi up in 2 lies in the unit circle so there's the polar form cos pi up in 2 plus i sine pi up in 2 another complete turn another 4 lots of pi up in 2 added on to the 1 pi up in 2 will give us 5 pi up in 2 as another argument giving the polar form cos 5 pi up in 2 plus i sine 5 pi up in 2 in this case a negative rotation of three lots of pi up and two. There's one of them, two of them, and the third lot of pi up and two. So argument negative three pi up and two, polar form cos negative three pi up and two plus i sine negative three pi up and two. And the last question, number four, let's show that this part, this complex number lies on the unit circle, does it have a modulus of 1? Well, the modulus, remember, we find by the square root of squaring the real part, squaring the imaginary part, and adding. So in this case, we square 1 upon root 2 to give us a half. Half plus a half is 1. The square root of 1 is 1. So that complex number does lie in the unit circle. So where is it? Well, there it is. How did we know it was there? Because the real part and the imaginary part are equal, both positive. It's in the first quadrant. Look at this triangle. That's an isosceles triangle, which would lead us to an argument of pi upon 4. So the polar form of that complex number 
would be cos pi upon 4 plus i sine pi upon 4. So that's Mr. Corsi signing out, and I hope you've enjoyed watching this video. Thank you.